Good evening. My name's Rob Urin, and just now I'm going to speak to you about heat projectors, those projectors with carbon filaments lamps. Some years ago there was a lamp introduced and um, it's done quite well and more recently new models have come along to replace it. So I thought it'd be good to compare some of them. We're going to have a look at uh, model parameters. We're going to look at some test results. I did a, a couple of tests which I'll share with you. And then finally we can make a conclusion of what these little creatures are like. So, first of all, what are we talking about? We're talking about a mega ray heat projector, a 60 watt one. Uh, it's been out a fair while. Uh, we're talking about the Arcadia heat projector, a 50 watt one, which has been out since 2018. And more recently, the new kid on the block. And this isn't the only new kid on the block. There's a whole lot of others that are coming through from China. So, they're the three we're going to compare here. The first thing you notice is that these have all got a mesh on the front and not glass, and that the mesh on the mega ray is different. They've got mesh rather than glass, because at the wavelengths that these filaments operate at, which is um, infrared B, glass blocks infrared B to some extent. And so therefore if you put glass on the front, the whole lamp would get really, really hot and perhaps do damage to the filament. If you take those same lamps and you stand them flat, you'll see that they're, they're all about the same. Um, the mega ray one stands higher because the, the um, mesh is convex and uh, makes it stand higher. But if you handle them, they feel the same, they look the same. The only difference I could find was a cosmetic uh, disfigurement on the pro rep lamp uh, on the silver area. Looking at the front, it's clear that the Mega Ray is quite different to the other two, and the other two are very similar. And in fact, the only differentiator for me, apart from the disfigurement, was the, the texture on the aluminium crimp for the mesh. Looking more closely, you can see the Mega Ray has got a, a cone shape former around which the uh, carbon filament is wound. Uh, the, the filament is open to the air um, but it is a nice shape and we will reflect all its radiation uh, in conjunction with the shape of the reflector in a very tight beam downwards. In contrast the filament for the Arcadia and the Pro Rep is encased in glass. It's a big shape and it's located um, in such a way that the light from the filament will be reflected in all sorts of ways, um, but not in a tight beam. And that makes a difference when you are using it and when you are actually doing tests with it. I've done a close-up of the mesh, and my friend from Reptile Lighting, Quinn, tells me that there is 29% attenuation by the mesh. What that means is that of all the energy that is radiated by the filament, 29% of it will be blocked by the mesh. That energy will be, will be caught, converted to heat and then re-radiated as uh, infrared C. And now there's an interesting thing. Before I plug in, I've discovered it's quite a good thing to take some measurements because if you do plug in and you screw up you let the smoke out and that really is not a good thing so I do these measurements first and here we go the lamp diameter for all three is about 96 97 millimeters they all weigh about the same thing the mega ray is a bit heavier and that might be because it's got that ceramic cone supporting the filament then then you come to the power factor. You expect carbon filaments to be entirely resistive. No capacitive reactants, no inductive reactants. You expect a power factor of one. And power factor tells you the relationship between 
the phase of the current and the phase of the voltage. And with resistors, there is no phase difference. They should be aligned. And the mega ray has no phase difference. It's got a power factor of one. But when I tested the Arcadia those two, three years ago, I saw a power factor of nine. That told me that there was something going on with the way that the filament is driven. And funnily enough, more recently when I tested the ProRep, that also had the same power factor. You could see why my interest was in it was peaked. And then when you do the resistance measuring of those two lamps, um, you find that the resistance of them is about 10 times higher. Now with a normal resistance with a mega ray, the 868 the 806 ohms can be measured with the probes from the meter swapped around. But when you do the same thing with the ProRep and the Arcadia, it will only measure in one direction. Telling me, maybe give me a clue that there might be a diode there. And being an inquisitive sort of chap, I took one apart. And when I took it apart and saw the filament, I measured its resistance and it was 580 ohms. Now when you do the ohms law calculation for power, you'll get the power for the resistive watts in the mega ray to be about 70 watts. But the power for this one, the Arcadia, was 101 watts, 102 watts nearly. Which means if this resistor was driven full hard with the full voltage, it would run this lamp very hot. But if you, if you measure the resistance, resistance of the lamp operating normally with a power meter, you'll see that there were 67 watts measured by the power meter, which is really, really close to the theoretical. You measure the other two, these are way down on the measured power against the theoretical of the filament, which supports uh, the premise that there'd be a diode there. I took it apart and on the right here you see this filament, the carbon um, filament, in a coil encased in the glass and I suspect that the glass does two things. It protects the filament from the air and it's probably got a gas in it but it also protects creatures and animals on the outside if they get through the mesh touching the filament and give themselves a nasty shock. The filament itself is about 890 millimetres, it's nearly a metre long, it's quite long when it's stretched out. And the filament closer up, you can see the filament here, look, it's got multi braids in it, so it means it's got a quite increased surface area for um, emission, but it is crimped, it's not soldered, you cannot solder carbon, and that's why uh, you've got this sort of joint to the electrical connection. These marks, incidentally, are me testing to see if it really is carbon and does it work like a pencil? And the answer is, yes it does. And lastly, I took the bottom half apart and lo and behold, that little baby is a diode. It's what I was looked, expecting and that's what I saw. So then I put these lamps and run them through an oscilloscope and what we've got here is uh, measurements of current the amps running through the filament and the first one I did with this with a tungsten lamp that I know is entirely resistive and here we go a lovely sine wave no messing about with the waveform these little sharp peaks are just noise on the line um, exactly what I expected to see same test on the mega ray 60 watt and again, nice little sine wave. Its peaks are a little bit further apart. That's because it's 60 watts and not 50 watts. So it's drawing a little bit more current and you expect the peaks to be higher. But when you look at the Arcadia and the ProRep, the nail is hammered into the coffin. That diode has shot the tops off the waveform here. All this voltage here, there would have been here, oops, mumbo jumbo. 
all this voltage that would have been here has been chopped off. That means not as much power is generated or used by the filament and it means it doesn't get as hot. Both of these curves are the same. One is upside down, that's simply because the diode has been fitted on this particular unit in an upside down sort of way. So some comparisons. The ProRep has the same shape dome. It takes the same power and it has the same shape filament. The semiconductor resistance was the same for both and both behaved in the same way um, in terms of dry, allowing the measurement to be taken one way but not the other. The waveforms were the same. From an engineering viewpoint, they're both the same within the tolerances that you expect from a normal production line. I did notice that the ProRep had cosmetic flaws on it. Um, the silvering was uh, not perfect, let's say. And I also know that the Arcade has been in service some three or four years longer than the ProRep and the new ones on the market. Of the testing I did, and I did this a year ago uh, before the ProRep and the others came on the market, um, showed me this, that the, the Mega Ray clearly got hot in the middle and this is this is the center of the test area and as we move to the right we get further from the area so the center of the test area here got really quite warm got to 15 degrees above the ambient but it dropped off quite quickly and that's because of the tight beam and the focusing that I talked about earlier this blue line this one here is from the 50 watt Arcadia one and I said that the light for the 50 watt lamp would go all over the place and so indeed it does. Um, it doesn't heat as high, it doesn't heat the surface as high but it spreads the heat all over the place and that might be preferable if you are looking to heat an area. And the grey line of course is um, from an, for an 80 watt Arcadia just to show that you add watts and you'll get heat. So in conclusion, I expect there will be claims by both and all companies that theirs is better. If it's 50 watts and it's got that shape, and if you do the resistance measurement yourself, they'll be the same. Same light distribution, same temperatures. The Mega Ray cone will make a difference in the way that the heat is managed and it will be a lot lot hotter in the middle and it is significantly hotter um, and if you use it do look how hot it is uh, for your animals or make it further away so if you produce if you have a 50 watt lamp it will produce 50 watts of heat it's just that it will be spread over a different area depending on which lamp you have The use of the diode and the way that the whole thing is done is unique. You don't often see that in lamps. And it makes you wonder, because of the uniqueness, what there might have been on the production line and if there was one production line or if there were several production lines. And on that note, I have to leave you and say good evening.